Dear citizens of Pulaski and to whom it may concern, many are aware of the events that occurred at the 2010 Chamber of Commerce Chili Cook-Off where Com County Commissioner Terry Harwell physically attacked me upon the command of his wife, City Council Member Vicki Harwell, while I was taping the many different booths that were using open flame cooking devices for their chili. I had documented similar things at other events. At the time, I had a business license for a production company in the city of Pulaski. I own property and live in the area. I have had local laws and the 2006 International Fire Code that the state of Tennessee and Pulaski are under arbitrarily enforced on my business by then mayor and current economic development head Dan Spear when I opened and was promoting my restaurant Pumpkin Blues Cafe. After Commissioner Harwell's attempted intimidation with the use of his elected position, physical attack, hate speech, and defaming remarks, Commissioner Harwell continued his attack by throwing water on me, all of which Mrs. Harwell denies to the police in the audio you are about to hear. Because of the continued attacks and threats by an anonymous poster on a local blog and statements that were made in the anonymous attacks, I obtained all evidence from the investigation conducted by the police in regards to the assault. Although I have had ev the evidence for a few months, it was only last month's month that I was able to listen to Vicki Harwell's statements to the police in which she goes out of her way to defame me and make such absurd claims that I can only bring them to the public so you can see the honesty of this elected official. In this audio you will hear statements by Mrs. Harwell that I physically shoved her and another woman, that I have stalked her and her family the better part of the summer that I followed her around and harassed her when she was working in an election, that I edited the videotape to change the content, and that someone put me up to come into her booth to destroy her campaign, all in an attempt to have me charged with assault after they filed a complaint with the Pulaski Police Department. You can see that Terry Harwell is listed as the victim in the report. All her statements to these accounts are simply lies to try to justify Terry's and her own actions. In my opinion, these are not people who deserve the privilege of holding public offices, and had they not been related to District Attorney Mike Bottoms, it is my opinion justice may have been served. After interviewing witnesses and viewing the raw footage they downloaded directly from my camera, the police found there was no reason to go forward with any charges against me and advised the District Attorney's office to go forward with the charges against Commissioner Harwell. However, five minutes before I was to testify before the grand jury, I was threatened by the pro tem prosecutor, District Attorney Dan Alsobrooks, who District Attorney Mike Bottoms requested be involved in the case. I was told if I tried to go forward with official oppression or official misconduct charges against Commissioner Harwell, he would block everything from going forward. He told me he had wasted hours driving down for this piddly little case and at one time he told me it was the lowest form of assault equivalent to a man striking his wife. I was allowed to go forward because the grand jury foreman overheard the heated exchange. I do not believe I testified well and overheard Terry and the grand jury joking around after his testimony so I knew I would not get all 12 jury members to vote yes, which is what I needed to go forward. When I tried to appeal and take it back to the grand jury in a different session, which was my right, it was blocked by both Bottoms and also Brooks. My faith in our criminal system vanished after this event because, in my opinion, it allows criminals to walk if they know the right people. Now Terry is still a commissioner serving on the ethics committee, was hired into a nice position in the financial management office even though there is a lot of question concerning his education and qualifications for the position as well as the application period being cut short. So it seems to me our government endorses this behavior. As far as Mrs. Harwell's accusations toward my character and actions, all of what she states is untrue with the exception I do feel the actions of former Dan, Mayor Dan Spear, 
the city council of which she was a part of, and others in the city administration did affect the ability for my business to market products I offered and be competitive with all other businesses in the area offering the same products and services. I promise that more about their actions will come out in the near future. Council Member Harwell will state that I should act like an adult and come to the city council meetings and address my grievances to all members. I say she, the mayor, and the city council should uphold their oath of office to protect all citizens' constitutional rights. It is on public record my attempts at work session meetings to have my complaints heard only to be silenced or ushered behind closed doors so my statements will not be on record. Does Mrs. Harwell not remember in 2008 when I came to a work session meeting and asked the city council to overturn the ordinance that banned businesses who operated on the square and one block off who had an on-premise beer permit from advertising their products when the state law and constitution clearly states they have that right? I guess Mrs. Harwell does not remember making the statement that she could not condone overturning the ordinance if it meant someone could come in and buy the Hunter Smith building, open up a restaurant, and hang a beer sign so the people of the Methodist Church would have to look at it. Where does half the city council claim to or attend church, including Mrs. Harwell? And what church ended up purchasing the building? I guess Mrs. Harwell ignores the fact that although the motion to vote on it was seconded, it was tabled, and to this day the city council has never and will never vote on it. But it is okay to hang beer banners on the gazebo of the courthouse lawn directly across from my building in the Methodist Church for the governor's one-shot turkey hunt, or march the Clydesdales around the square and issue illegal temporary beer permits on the courthouse lawn and have people walk across the street and drink beer on the church lawn even though the permit was not issued for one block off the square. It is okay to open up the courthouse and have a party and allow drinking on the premises at these events. And it is okay to have people at these events get their beer from the courthouse lawn and walk right past my business drinking beer when I am not allowed as much as one sign advertising the product via their own local laws when I have a permit to distribute it. In fact, as long as you are a nonprofit organization such as the Stars Theater or a political group, you may obtain a temporary permit, hang beer signs all over the square, and have no restrictions on the distribution of beer. Why is that? Why is it that groups like the Ku Klux Klan can obtain a beer permit, hang beer signs, and serve it on the courthouse lawn if they desire, but a person such as myself who invested in this town wants to build a business has their rights violated and is so shown such animosity. I reveal all this at a later time. I guess Mrs. Harwell forgets when I came to another work session meeting and told them about the state law that forbids the issuance of temporary permits on public property unless you are in a class B counties or counties with a population greater than 300,000 of which we are neither. But then they turned around and issued another temporary permit to the Kiwanis Club for the event she mentions in the audio, and most everyone running for election sets up booths and promotes their campaigns, bands play, and beers distributed. I guess Mrs. Harwell forgets the meeting when I addressed city council about the distance rules from churches, schools, and playgrounds, of which they completely took off for businesses that have 5,000 square feet of space and 50% of their gross revenues are derived from the sale of groceries. Contrary to the state constitution and precedent set in other court cases. Only to be told to go get a lawyer by Dan Spear or go behind closed doors and discuss it with the city attorney. Why were these establishments advertisements, advertising not hindered? Where was Mrs. Harwell in those meetings? sitting quietly as did all the other city council members. It is all a matter of public record for anyone to request. In, to re in regards to council members Harwell's additional fictitious claims she makes in the audio to the police, I did not and have not ever shoved or stalked her or any other ladies. I did not hang out at the business next door, B3 Beauty Supply, and wait on her only to run out and mock her. 
I have bought two suits, a lab coat, hair products, and miscellaneous other items to use as wardrobe in some of the other productions I've worked on. In addition, I am friends with the gentleman that works there, Mr. Martin, and we sometimes go and eat lunch. He can and is willing to testify that Mrs. Harwell's statements are untrue because he was standing five feet away the only time I have ever directed conversation to Mrs. Harwell outside of a city council meeting unless I talked to her the day she says she ate at my restaurant. In fact, if you listen to the testimony of Mrs. Harwell's co-worker who was on the inside of the building when the exchange took place, the two stories do not coincide, but the co-worker did recount the conversation closer than Mrs. Harwell did. I'm sorry Council Member Harwell does not feel I should have the use of the sidewalks when traveling from my building to other businesses such as Town Square Market, PES, Watson's, Bluebird, the Municipal Building, etc. I have no problem sharing the exchange with Council Member Harwell and me on that day. On a prior day, I'd been informed by a mutual friend of Council Member Harwell and myself that she was going to run for mayor. I had not seen any campaign signs, and one day Mr. Martin and I were going to eat lunch at Pizza Hut. He was locking the door, and I was standing on the sidewalk when Mrs. Harwell walks past me to the door to her office. I turn and said, I hear you are going to run for mayor. She turns and says, that's right. I said, please don't. She said, what? I said, please don't. I do not believe you will be the best in that position for the citizens of Pulaski. She said that I did not know her well enough to make that statement. I said I knew the statement she had made in favor of her over her church over my advertisement of my, building, of my business. She told me I may not have the enemies I thought I did in the council and why don't I come in and talk to her. I told her I had no desire to go behind closed doors for conversations that should be held in public venue. She started talking over me and I ended my conversation by stating I could see no difference in her or Dan Spears' politics. And that was it. Any other time she says I have addressed her or specifically followed her or her family members are blatant lies. I did have one conversation with Terry Harwell prior to the 2010 chili cook-off. Coincidentally, it was when he was standing in front of my building campaigning at a chili cook-off a couple of years earlier. I had decided to vote for another candidate, and when Terry extended his card to me, I said, no, thank you. He said he was running for commissioner in my district. I said, I know, and I walked on by him and went in my building. I never thought anything else about it. It seems from the audio recording that some of their animosity towards me stems from the fact that I support a candidate they hate. Listen to Terry's claims in the Chili Cook-Off video. The only thing I ever desired was to have the same rights and competitive advantage in marketing my business as everyone else in the city of Pulaski. Now I see I should have done this a long time ago, but better late than never. I will be releasing videos I produce sharing with citizens conversations I've had with the administration of this city. So many people come into this town and see potential to do business and for growth. When I returned here, where I grew up, to be close to my relatives that were getting older, some suffering from illnesses, I saw great potential for business in this area. But I soon found a few people who were in key positions and more worried about their own shameless self-promotion and benefiting only their friends and family is what has killed this town economically. I know there are many great citizens in this beautiful town and county and who want the opportunity to develop business or just have employment opportunities, but that will be for a later time. The following is the audio from the Vicki Harwell interview conducted by Officer Joy Turner. This is the complete interview. You may obtain your own copy by public record if you think I've tampered with it to leave any testimony out or to change what is said. I will also repost the chili cook-off video for you to compare side by side with her statements. If anyone feels I've edited the chili cook-off video where Terry attacks me, please put your money where your mouth is and hire a certified video specialist with verifiable credentials to try to validate your claims. You're going to be wasting your money, but you're welcome to do it. The camera got turned off for about 15 seconds in the struggle, and then I turned it back on because I thought I needed to continue to document Terry's actions. 
Now, during the struggle, I did use the MF word. I apologize for this. And I was unaware of it until I viewed the video. So you will see me state something inaccurate later in the video when I said I had not used profanity. I'm not claiming to be an angel, and I have used profanity before. I am stating that day in that situation, I would have never used it had I not been physically attacked. And for using it, I do apologize. For fairness, I will also post the audio from my interview with Officer Turner so you may compare to the two. Now I'm going to let you listen to the Vicki Harwell interview. How you do it? How you do it? Oh, Terry, they're taking the picture of the winner. I'm just documenting uh, why that they're allowed to violate the fire ordinances, but my my Why don't business. You go check with them. I got me a permit, Bob. You can go Did check you? with them. I do. Oh, so so you get a permit over I that? I'm not gonna deal with you tonight. You've been ugly with me all the time. Well, I, I when a person to do is just when, leave our booth. Terry, actually, actually, I can stand here on the street. You want to get a get on? Now, hey, take, don't, a, take don't, that don't. out of my face. I got every right. Take out, you ain't got no right. Motherfucker, you're about to get knocked out. I got every right to stand right here and film. You ain't got a right to say what you said. What did I say? You don't know what you said. You're talking, fuck. I got the I got the laws right here that say it's illegal for you to be in front of It ain't illegal for you to be talking like that. What the hell am I talking? You don't know what you said. Get away from my dad. You seem to be the one. Get somebody up That's that's the problem. He's got you on tape. Well, you're the one that came off your seat. Put his cell phone tape. Huh? He's the one that causes yes. the problem. You're the one causing the problem. South I got it. The chili cook off. No, Chris, no, you you get him away. No. You about like. You and Alan Barrett, y'all about like two biggest nuts in Dallas County. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. We'll see. Now this all this all would be alleviated if a person. If a person that's sitting on the city council that's running for mayor that's right here. I'm not on the city council. She is. I'm a, I'm she a, is. I don't care about you. She got nothing to do with it. This Ab is actually, I'm she a does. I'm a county commissioner. Yeah, and I know you're what in my you district. What you going to do about it? I don't know. Keep on talking. Keep on talking. Well, he ain't nothing. Bag it. What'd you call me? You know what you are. No, what'd you call me? You know what, you are. what did you call me? My husband is a United States soldier, and you're being a jerk right Listen, now. Listen, don't come up here. He's not just right. Try to do he that. No. Now, no, what did you, you call me? Up in here just trying Actually, to start this, this, this. We're this. having a good time. Uh, We're having a good time. Let's just don't. Do you see on. that? 